Hello and uh, welcome to the introduction uh, to the course Introduction to Web Programming uh, at Linnaeus University. Uh, so this is might be quite unusual for you guys to have a course introduction recorded. Uh, but uh, I would like to do this so that you will get a good start and, and know what's expected of you on beforehand because this will be a course that is might be a little special uh, to what you're used to uh, in at least one, uh, those of you who are uh, taking this core, course as a part of a study program. Um, for the, some of you are, are, are are new to, to, to the university and to, to courses at the university, so you, so you don't know what to expect. So, so this might be a normal <laughs> case for you guys. Um, uh, my name is Johan Leitet and I am the course coordinator of a, a program in, in Kalma called the Web Developer Program. And this course is kind of a sub, uh, uh, a part of, of, of that program put together in a course for those of you that know um, uh, programming in like Java or C Sharp or, or any other object oriented language. And, and want to transition transition those those this knowledge to to the web development space, um, and um, I will go over some details about the course. Uh, and the thing is that I will be traveling uh, during the period of August, so I my first working day more or less is when the course starts at the Monday of the twenty eighth of August. Uh, so I will be really, really hard to, to get hold of during uh, this period when you might have questions. So, so with this introduction, I just want to get, get you started with the course and uh, let you know that uh, on Wednesday, if you look in the, the schedule on Wednesday, we will have a course introduction in Växjö uh, where uh, I will be, be there to, to answer questions more or less. So, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to, to, to say that all material in this course, in this introduction, all the, the exercises, uh, the lectures that are being recorded, all of this material is uh, Creative Commons. So anyone who, who, who would like to, to use this course uh, are free to do so. You uh, just need to comply with this, these rules. So I'm not alone in this course. Um, uh, I'm the course manager together with Matt Locke, who uh, is a colleague of mine here in Kalmar. Um, we are the two persons you will meet the most uh, and have contact with uh, during the course. However, we have backups in John Hagerud and J Jacob Lindehoff. Uh, they were more integrated in the course last year, but they have a pretty demanding new course this period, so, so, so you might not see so much of them. Um, but I will go into how to contact us in a little while. So, uh, the course is called uh, an introduction to web programming. Uh, the main field of study is computer science. Uh, it is a computer science course. The progression is key one f and that is, uh, as you might know, it's, it's kind of a basic course, but we have some prerequisites. Uh, in, in this case, you need to, to have done object-oriented programming. Uh, most of you have the course 1DV006, uh, problem, problem solving and programming. Uh, but if you don't, you should have something uh, similar. Um, a typical object-oriented uh, course in Java is, is, is good enough to start off with this course. So, the content of this course is, is kind of a mix uh, of, of the first courses given in the web developer program. Um, so, so it's first, first year students taking those courses. Uh, those of you uh, that are program students are probably in the second or even third grade, I think. Um, so you should be well prepared for this course. However, last year they said that it was quite a tough course, so, so you will need to, 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 to get, a, get hours in uh, to be able to complete the course. 
So we have a syllabus. You can see it um, uh, and, and study it on this link if you like. I will. I, I have broken out some some parts of the syllabus that we will go through. Um, so after the course, you should be able to. You should be able to create web pages using HTML and CSS, and um, that is um, not a big part of the course. However, uh, it's it's the first two weeks. Uh, HTML and CSS are like some must know when it comes to web development. However, it's not that hard to, to, to just get a basic feeling for HTML and CSS. However, if you want to be good at CSS and doing like beautiful web pages and design, then you need to put many hours in and you might even have to have some kind of, of eye for, for, for design. Uh, that is not the goal with the course. The goal with the course is to, to get you up to speed with creating simple web pages using HTML and CSS and be able to use this knowledge to create web applications using JavaScript in the end. So the big focus on the course is JavaScript. Uh, and the second goal of the course is analyze problems and evaluate and choose appropriate design and construct solutions in the form of programs in the programming language JavaScript. Okay, so you are supposed to write JavaScript applications uh, uh, in this course. And those JavaScript applications, they will uh, be client-side applications, so, so, and the client being the browser, so applications for the browser. Uh, you should be able to describe a web browser's different internal components and their interaction, including browser security mechanisms. And this is an important uh, part. You will see that the browser is, I mean, the browser is, is um, have different parts, how those different parts uh, act together and what security problems will there be with client-side applications. Um, this course, uh, had a successor in uh, 1DV523 uh, that some of you might have applied to as well. Uh, in that course we will write server-side applications using JavaScript and, and uh, in, in those when we have both the server and the client we could add more security and we have more uh, could have more detailed discussions uh, about security mechanisms. So we will lay the foundation in this course and we will start uh, or have a, f a deeper discussion in the, in the next course. Uh, you should be able to create web applications where JavaScript, HTML and CSS have clear, I think, yeah, clear roles and are clearly separated. Uh, I will be quite, I will stress this, uh, we will separate our code. We will have work with modules in JavaScript. Uh, we will separate the HTML and CSS. We will work with modules using something called Webpack uh, to separate those and, and, and look at different pros and cons for, for different concepts. So this is a, a, an important uh, goal as well. Uh, and you should be able to store and with asynchronous communication transfer for, for the task appropriate data format. Uh, transfer data with for the task appropriate data formats. So uh, we will use something called a sonic, a asynchronous communication that is ADX or WebSockets uh, that will make it so that we could communicate between the server and the, and the browser in, a, in a, an efficient way. And we will use uh, data transfer protocols and uh, 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 and data formats, and in this case we will use JSON uh, as the data format for, for doing this. You might be familiar with XML. We will not use XML in this course because JSON is so much simpler and easier to work with, especially when it comes to JavaScript. Uh, so we will focus on, on JSON and sending data from the client to the server or to the server to the client. But we, in this course we, we have written the server for you, so you need to focus on the client part. Uh, and, and all together, we will put this together into a big application in the end, uh, a spa, a so-called spa application, a single page application that will um, have like chats and, and games and stuff in it. Uh, and you will like build this application starting with the exercises in the, in the start of the course and, and it will end up with a, quite a big application in the end. 
Um, the approach to this is we have three parts. Uh, so the first part is uh, HTML and CSS, um, and or mainly HTML and CSS, but also a transition between Java and JavaScript. So just to get you up to speed with JavaScript as a, a programming language. Uh, it, it stems from a completely different um, uh, background than, than Java, even though Java, you have Java in the name, it has nothing to do with Java. It has borrowed some of the syntax from Java, but, but, the, but um, in the foundation, the programming language is completely different. So, so we will have to spend a couple of lectures on, on, on getting you up to speed with, the, with those differences. Uh, HTML and CSS, as I said, will be a part uh, of, of, uh, of this first part, um, uh, starting off with one lecture in HTML and one lecture in CSS, and I, I hope we will not need more than that. I will point you to, to resources that you could use as well. Um, the second part, Doom, AJAX, and Storage. DOM is the, uh, the, DOM is the API uh, uh, in which we, we could communicate to the browser. So, so it's the, the browser API more or less, or, 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 or the browser's API for, for uh, uh, modifying and, 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 and working with the web page. Uh, there are many other um, uh, APIs in the browser as well. Um, so we will look at that. That's an important part being able to, to like adding stuff to our web pages and removing and uh, altering uh, the content of a web page. That's more or less working with the DOM. ADX, as I said, asynchronous communication with the server. Uh, that is also part of the second part. And storage. Uh, so we could, we have storage built into the browser. How do we store simple data or more advanced data? Um, we will discuss that in that part as well. That leads us up to the third part, uh, the SPA, the single page applications. Uh, and this is basically uh, web applications that do not reload, uh, that you don't need to reload a whole page all the time. You are probably familiar with them. And, and this, those types of applications will bridge over to, to more native applications. So, so there is like techniques like React Native that, that allows you to, to write a an application using uh, uh, those techniques that we will go over in the course, and then you are able to uh, to to release those on, as an app for an, uh, for an, for a mobile or a smartphone or a desktop application. So so those types of applications are not only meant to be run in a, in in the web browser; they could also be be used in, in other. Uh, other uh, uh, environments. However, we will focus on, on, on the browser in this course. Um, so we have 10 lectures in the course uh, every Wednesday at 10, 15 and 13, 15. Uh, so I will be commuting. I'm, I'm located in Kalmar, as you can see, uh, together with my colleagues. Uh, and I will have to commute to Växjö every Wednesday for, for this course. That means going by bus to the station in Kalmar, going by train to Växjö, going by bus to, to, to the campus in Växjö. Uh, there are uh, several factors that could, could go wrong uh, during this commute. So if I'm not present uh, at uh, 9.30 that I'm supposed to be, I, I, I will come to 9.30 soon, uh, then you know something has happened. I, could be a couple of minutes late, or check uh, the Slack channel that I will go over as well. If 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 something major is going on, and I'm sick, or or my kids are sick, or something like that. Um, but but my goal is to to, to travel to Växjö at least in the beginning uh, every week uh, for this course, and um, we might have a different uh, setup in the end using this studio uh, for for recordings. But but we will see how how things play out. Uh, so there are 10, approximately 10 lectures, uh, and something that might be new to you, and that's called uh, peer instructions. Uh, the peer instructions uh, are like interactive lectures uh, where you are uh, in the classroom together with me, you have like smartphones or your computers or whatever, and I will post questions and you will vote on those questions, what is the right answer and the wrong, yeah, the right answer basically. Um, if 70% or more of you uh, 
are know that uh, topic well, so you answer correctly, then we will just skip that topic and go to the next one. But if we have a lower percentage, uh, I know that, okay, so this is a hard topic, then we could spend some time on, on that specific question. So this is quite interactive, it's quite fun, and it has been uh, proven by research that this type of lecture also gets better grades in the end or better student results in the end. So, so we have tried this for a couple of years and we are pretty pleased with the result and we will try it in this course as well. Uh, it's really important though that you show up on the peer instructions in the classroom. If, if there are no students there, that they will become totally meaningless. We will not record those peer instructions. Uh, they will be only offline, uh, so, so you need to be there on, on campus for those. Uh, with that said, the lectures will be recorded. There are lectures from the last year recorded as well, so if you are uh, impatient, you could always check the, um, the lectures from last year. Uh, beware, I mean, the, the theoretical content ha hasn't changed. Uh, JavaScript, the language, works uh, today as it did last year with some additions maybe, but, but the core is, 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 is the same. However, uh, for this year we have changed some of the development tools. So you will have slight differences in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in how the tools are being used. Uh, just bear, bear in mind that, that that is the case. Um, so lectures and peer instructions, and we have tutoring each week as well, or my, my, my goal is to have tutoring each week. So I might, uh, or I, I will try to be in Vecchia uh, 9.30 each Wednesday. Uh, and 9.30 to the first lecture begin at 10.15, 10, we have 45 minutes where I can answer questions. Uh, so if, if, you, if you want to, to, to ask me a question in person, use that time. It will be in the schedule as, or is in the schedule as well. Uh, during that time, Mats, uh, the, the, the other guy uh, being responsible for this course, will be sitting in Kalmar and he will be able to assist you over Skype as well. So, so uh, for those of you that uh, are not in Vecchia or uh, are not able to, to uh, or I, if, if my time is limited, you could always have Mats as a backup over Skype as well. Um, so there are three, this course isn't a traditional course where you just study and you have a, a, a written exam in the end. This is a different course. Uh, in this course you have three uh, examination tasks or examination assignments, one for each part of the course. Uh, you complete the assignment by your own, of course with input from me or, 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 or your classmates or, or, or I mean, in a, in, a, in a reasonable way, but you're not supposed to copy code, uh, you know the drill. Um, you complete the assignment, you hand it in using Git and GitHub. Uh, I will show that as well. Uh, and then that is not enough either because you will have uh, oral hearing in, after you have handed this assignment in. So you hand in the assignment and then you book a time for an oral hearing. Uh, and the oral hearings uh, will probably take place in Vecchia. I, I hope Mats and maybe Jakob and Jan will travel and we will uh, have, 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 have a meeting in Vecchia. Uh, uh, otherwise we will uh, f inform you that you might be using Skype for those, uh, those uh, oral hearings. However, the oral hearing will consist of, 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 of a couple of parts. First of all, we will um, ask questions about your code. Okay, so why did you write it as you did? Are there any other possible solutions? Okay, why did you make this choice instead of this? And you, you will have to reason about your code. So, so it's not that you just could write the assignment and forget about the code. You need to be up to date with your code on the oral hearing. That's the first thing. Second thing is on the oral hearings, we will also uh, try you on the theory of the course. So for each part, there is a theory block uh, with reading in the literature and, and my lectures and, and, and stuff like that we will ask questions on, on, on those topics on the oral hearing and you're supposed to be able to answer those. This is like the written exam, but in an oral way. Um, 
Uh, we have found, I mean, in, in Kalmar, all of our courses are both campus and distance courses, so-called hybrid courses. Uh, and we have found that this is quite a good way of, of, of having, uh, having exams because it's, I mean, you, you could misinterpret it if, question and write a wrong answer on a written exam, but on the oral hearing I will catch on that and I say, oh, oh, no, no, think of it this way and you will be able to, to like, correct your, yourself on the way. So, so it has worked really, really well the last couple of years when we have done this, so, so I think it will in this course as well. So there are three of those oral hearings, one for each part. So, to summarize, for each part you have an assignment that you do, you hand it in over GitHub and you uh, apply for an examination uh, hearing and then you show up and do the oral hearing. Um, and then that concludes one part and you do that three times. That is the examination in the course. No read, read an exam in the end of the course. Um, I, I, I might, may have mentioned this, just a short introduction to, to the parts, HTML, CSS and JavaScript language. Uh, corresponds to do those two, two goals. Uh, you should be able to create web pages using HTML and CSS. Uh, you should be able to bridge between Java and JavaScript or C Sharp. If, 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 if you're more familiar with C Sharp, you will also so get a hang of it. Um, this is four lectures, one examination assignment, one oral hearing, and of course the Turing passes or Turing um, sessions. The part two, DOM and storage goals describe web browsers, internal components, uh, security models, and so on. So this is more or less getting started with a browser. So, so while this is, is, is techniques in general, this is starting out with a browser. Um, uh, yeah, there are quite a, some topics. We have three lectures, one peer instruction, assignment, or oral hearing and during, and, and the same for the third part. I will not go into those. Uh, right now, so literature, uh, we have a book that you are recommended to use. It's called Eloquent JavaScript. Uh, you find it on this link. Uh, the good thing with this book is it's online based, so, so you're free to just use it online if you like. There are some, some um, uh, good things by using it uh, online actually because you, you are able to to, to edit uh, the code in the book and try it for yourself if you like. Uh, however, if you like to <coughs> read in text, you could order this book, of course, as a paperback. Um, I think this book will suit you really well because it's, it's hard for, this book could be quite hard for beginners, but for someone with an experience in an object-oriented language, this book is really perfect to, to bridge. However, it's written a couple of years ago, so the syntax in some ways are, uh, I mean, in the JavaScript community, the, the wheels are spinning really fast right now and have been spinning for the last couple of years. And uh, new features are introduced to the language each year. Uh, and uh, this book, written a couple of years ago, are not up to date with all of those changes. Uh, bear that in mind. Uh, it's not important, you will learn the basic concepts anyway, uh, so, and everything else is more or less syntactic sugar on top of, of what you will learn in this course. If you want to deep even further down uh, this rabbit hole, uh, you could also read Professional JavaScript for Web Developers by Nicholas Sakas. Sakas is well known in the community, uh, this is a classic book. Uh, also, some years uh, old, so bear that in mind. Uh, I haven't scouted the last year's literature, actually, so there might be other books out there that are good. However, in JavaScript, there are also a lot of books that are really, really bad, so stay away from those. Uh, if, if you have questions about a book, just send them to me and I will have a look and answer them as good as I can. Um, you will need to a lot of tools on your computer and this is the first thing. I hope all of you have your own computer. Uh, it's a hazard to install those systems needed on uh, the computers at like for instance the library. 
Uh, so, so I really, really hope that all of you have a own computer or a laptop that you could, could uh, do the assignments on. If you don't, please contact me and we will uh, try to find a special solution for you. Uh, so, so if you don't have a computer uh, at hand, please send me an email so I know, know that and could, could take, take uh, precautions for, uh, or take uh, action for you. Um, on this computer, you need to install some stuff. You need to install Git if you haven't already. Git is a versioning handling, version handling or source control system to, to control the, the, the source code uh, to be able to have revisions uh, and to, to save those revisions on, in our case, GitHub uh, as a shared uh, repository. Uh, we have a organization on GitHub um, that is uh, the course. Uh, and in this organization, you will have access to private repositories so that you could safely store your code there. And the, the course management, me and Mats, will be able to, to have a look at it, but not the other students. Um, you should have an IDE uh, in an um, integrated development environment um, or and an editor. Uh, in our case, we will be using Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Uh, you could run that on Linux, OS, uh, micro, uh, Mac OS, and, and, and on Windows, of course. Uh, it's a really good editor. It's lightweighted. It's uh, feature heavy still. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, we've used WebStorm last year. Uh, so if you look at old demos, you will find WebStorm. Uh, being used and WebStorm is kind of like equips, uh, Eclipse, so it's quite slow. Uh, Wisher Studio Code isn't. You can use whatever you like. We will, new demos uh, and instructions will be written for Microsoft Wisher Studio Code, and if you don't know what to use, use that. Otherwise, you're free to do whatever you like, like using Atom, Sublime, uh, uh, WebStorm, Eclipse, whatever. But uh, the instructions will be for Microsoft Wisher Studio Code. It's free, free to use as well. Uh, you need to install Node.js, the application platform Node.js. We will uh, make heavy use of that for our supporting tools when writing client-side uh, applications. Uh, in uh, the next course, the 1DV523, server-based web development, you will uh, use Node.js as the application server. Uh, in this course, we will use it for some assignments uh, as an application server uh, that we have written. Uh, but you will need Node.js to be able to complete the course. So please go ahead, install the current version of Node.js together with NPM. Uh, uh, it will, uh, uh, it will be, be in the bundle. Um, last year, we used uh, virtualization using uh, Vagrant. Uh, you are free to do that if you like. However, it's a hazard with Windows and, and virtualization. So if you're on Windows, I shouldn't recommend it. Uh, if you're on Linux or, or, or Mac OS, no problem, just go ahead. Uh, if you would like to use Docker, same thing, just go ahead, ahead if you like. Uh, we might uh, integrate Docker into this course uh, during this coming year. So, so if, you, if you would like to try, please go ahead. Some students did last year and uh, they had no problems doing that. Uh, that makes, makes it so that you don't need to install like Node.js on your local machine. You can have it in a virtualized uh, environment instead. When Node is installed uh, and you are bringing up your uh, assignments uh, uh, and exercises, we will make heavy use of something called Webpack that is used to, to, to handle modules in, in, in the client-side application. And we will also use standard JS that is a code standard for for JavaScript, so standard JS will dictate how you are supposed to write your code, like when to use, uh, how many spaces to use, for instance. Uh, and, uh, so it's two spaces uh, for those of you who, who wonder. Uh, Microsoft Wisher Studio Code uh, with the extension of standard JS will will fix this for you automatically and 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 and, and, and comply to those rules. But there are also some some uh, some things like. Uh, the use of sem semicolon in the end of line or not. Uh, in standard JS, uh, it's not. So we will actually uh, not use semicolons in, in the end of lines, and you are not supposed to do that either. Uh, 
oh, but I like my semicolons. Yeah, fine. You, you, you are free to use semicolons in, uh, when you do your own projects. But in this course, we have uh, complied to standard.js and we will use that code standards. That is just because we don't want to look at shitty code. Um, we, 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 we like to, to, to have code that is written in, in a way that we, are, we can read it. Uh, so please uh, do that or you will have an automatic fail on, on the assignments or not a fail, uh, fail with uh, the ability to, to, to make the changes to be, be passed <laughs> in, in the future. So, but you, we will send it back to you. And there are some other tools as well, but we will uh, catch those on the way. The, the most important part in the beginning, install Git and be familiar with Git and GitHub. There are instructions on the course webpage. Look at some tutorials and stuff like that. Install an IDE and uh, install Node.js. Those are the three things you need in the beginning. So, uh, as you might have noticed, probably around me, depending on how you look at this, uh, this recording, but uh, I, I've I've released it on, on the course web page. Uh, uh, as you might see, this is not Moodle. Uh, we are not huge fans of Moodle and haven't used it. Um, or we actually wrote our own system like many years ago. And this is kind of a version of it. It's called CoursePress. Uh, it hasn't been updated for, for a couple of years, um, but it still makes the job more easy. And, that is everything in the course is open and, and accessible without you needing to log in anywhere. And um, so let's have a look at, at the course webpage. If I could find my cursor, there it is. So this is the course webpage, uh, the introduction to the web programming. Uh, you have the menu here at the left, uh, and this is more or less what you need to, 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 to know at, at the beginning. Uh, you had a syllabus, wasn't supposed to click that actually. Uh, how do I get back? Um, you have a Slack channel and Slack is, is, is the, 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 the tool that we use for communicating in the course. Uh, when uh, the one of the first things you need to do is to install uh, or, or register on Slack, I should say. So using your uh, LNU email, you're able to register on this check Slack channel. Just click this Slack channel and you will be taken to sign in form. Uh, uh, create an account. Uh, so if you have an LNU or a student LNU SA email, you can create an account. So go ahead and do that. And then you're logged in, in course press. If I could like just have a moment. Let's see if I could show you something of how it looks inside of course press. Um, oh. um, okay, so this is course. When you're signed in, you will see something looking like this, more or less. Uh, and you will find channels, so you can search channels. Uh, you will find one DV525, so this is the course channel. Uh, it's empty right now, might not be empty when you check in. Uh, so favorite this uh, and have all the discussions regarding the course in this channel. So. Okay, will there be a lecture next Wednesday? Ask the question here. Don't send me an email because better to send them here so all of you can, could have those discussions. Um, Slack is heavily used in, in like companies as well. It's, if you haven't used Slack, uh, it's, 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 it's time to, to, to be able to do that. Um, you will also find that we have topics like a topic called HTML and CSS is quite quiet right now. Here we could have discussions about HTML and CSS and not only with course uh, uh, um, participants because this is open for all, all of our students. So in this, 
in this topic, there might be students that are now working as, as web designers. So, so if you ask your question here, you are more likely to get a good answer than just in, inside of the course, uh, um, the course tag or course channel. Uh, as well, we have a topic yeah, JavaScript. This one is more heavily used. You uh, can get into the discussions. Here are uh, students from last year discussing something about uh, yeah, async await and, and, and asynchronous programming. So, uh, and, and we also have a lot of students active as, uh, at companies as, as JavaScript developers communicating through this channel. So please make good use of this one. Uh, you will have a general and, and job pool. Uh, this is for uh, some extra works that are, are coming into me. And uh, yeah, just have a look around uh, uh, and you will probably find things that suit you. But make heavy use of the 1db525 channel uh, because this is, is the one where we should communicate. This is more or less the nerve of the course. So um, information is also pushed into this uh, channel. So when I release a new video on YouTube, Hopefully, that will show up here. Uh, news on the course webpage will show up here. So this is kind of like an uh, aggregator for, for, for things happening in the course. Um, okay, let's get back to, to uh, the course webpage then. Um, okay, further on, watch live. So I said that all lectures are being broadcasted uh, and we are broadcasting them using uh, YouTube. Uh, we are using the channel Computer Science Play 4. So uh, follow this link and you will find a live version of the lecture when it's held in Växjö. So Wednesdays 10.15 or 13.15, it will be live on this channel, hopefully. Uh, tutoring more information will be come soon. Okay, getting started. This one is important for, for you right now, the first week. Information about how to set up Git and GitHub, how about the IDE and the application environment, and how to get started with exercises. So uh, getting started is a good way of, of getting started with the course. Uh, this one, uh, this course interaction will be published here, uh, and I will have some complementary uh, information the first Wednesday in Vecchio as well. Uh, okay, you find the lectures for the first, assign uh, first part here. And uh, as you can see, you could, if you like, go into lecture two uh, and you will find the recording from last year here. Uh, and you could just play it if you like. Um, uh, like that. And you will find a presentation and, and, and links. So, so everything regarding a lecture you will find on the lecture page. Uh, so if you miss the lecture, just go in and watch it at a later time. Uh, you will find like this, uh, read instructions as well to the literature. Uh, first, second and third part, uh, you have the exercises. The first examination task is live here. I, when this, Date is updated, you will know that this is live. So there might be minor changes to this one right now. However, the, the, the task will be the same, uh, but I will sh maybe change some minor details. Not too many on this one though. So please go ahead and start it if you like. Um, you have some resources regarding GitHub pages that are referenced in this one as well. Uh, exercises at the JavaScript uh, part, those I'm working on right now. We have uh, done some updates to this year, so I will probably start recording some introductions to those as well. So just have a look at that when they are ready. And if you like, you could always find the, uh, the, the, the last year's course page by clicking here and you will get to the HT16 version. So you could like see the differences if you, if you like, but uh, that shouldn't be, be necessary right now, I think. Okay. Oh, I need to do it like that. That was actually the last slide as well. So, uh, so this is just a brief introduction. Things will be different from what you're used to. Uh, however, uh, hopefully they will be different in a good way. Oh, I forgot one thing actually. Uh, 
so if we look at this course interaction, you will find a link here. This is the course evaluation from last year. And, and you're always supposed to, to show this evaluation uh, when you uh, start a new course. So I will do that right now. So what did a student think about the, the, the course in general? Oh, quite good or, or very good for, for the majority of the students. It was a quite popular course. Um, the course pace. Uh, we should be like, it's a 50 person course, so we should be here. And some of you, uh, some of the students, or one student in this case, thought it was a lot of work uh, in the course. And uh, the problem is that this period uh, at the autumn is nine weeks. And this course is designed to be a 10 week course. So the 10 week course is squeezed into nine weeks and that will make it a little bit harder for you. However, the students taking this course in the next period, which is 11 weeks. So those students will have 11 weeks to, uh, to do the same thing as you have on nine weeks. Is it fair? No, but that's life. Uh, I can't do anything about it. Uh, it's the same course, uh, more or less, uh, and they are separated in, in those periods. And uh, I can't do anything about that. Um, but of course, there are two weeks difference between you guys and the next uh, students coming for this course and, and you will have you will suffer a bit about that you will have a, a harder pace however for those of you taking the next course 1 dv 5 to 3 you will uh, experience the opposite because you will have a 10 week course on 11 weeks when our students taking this course the next period will have it on nine weeks so yeah that is kind of how it is um, uh, the course was stimulated creativity and critical thinking. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, it's hard to say anything when there are no comments. Uh, the course has highly set knowledge objectives. Agree? Yeah, and one had no opinion. Uh, the course has been characterized by high pedagogical quality. Uh, someone disagreed, but hard to say why. Uh, might come to that. Uh, da -da -da -da. How many hours a week? Okay, so we ideally we should have like 25. And so the majority have 20 uh, or 20, 20 hours or something like that. 25 maybe. Uh, so the majority have put in those kind of hours. Uh, learning content, the course syllabus was clear and followed. I don't know, okay. Most of you agreed or you the students last year agreed, yep, at least, at least. Literature and the course material, yada, yada. Okay, so uh, some comments. Uh, did you learn what you expected? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, there was a broken link, so that explains the I don't know part, probably. Yeah, so nothing too alarming there. Uh, bup, 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 engaged, uh, creative, active, yes. Uh, the influence of the course, uh, possibility to influence the course and took part in creative and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so of course you're able to, to, to I mean, in, in this course we have some set goals, but you're, you're, you're free to, to, to design and use the tools you like. We, we have like a modern tool set that we would like you to use, but but you are free to, to, to make other choices. However, you are supposed to use, as I said, the standard JS for the code, uh, for, the, for, for the syntax of, of, of the code. But um, other than that, you are pretty free in this course. However, you, you, we have the assignments and you need to do those. You can't do other assignments. Uh, that's just how it is. Uh, feedback for improvements. Okay, someone didn't think it was good class engagement between peers. More interactivity. Uh, this is the first course uh, where you use computers, yada, yada. Ah, okay, so this is more or less, they like that we use uh, YouTube and uh, recordings, but we could do that in a even greater extent, and yeah, I, 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 I solely, I, I, I agree. We have, we had some, or have some demos, 
uh, recorded to the exercises. I plan on expanding those so you have more recordings for those exercises. Um, hopefully that will help. This is one of the best courses I've taken so far. The learning outcomes were absolutely useful to nowadays environment, computer science, yada yada. Uh, yeah, someone decreased the amount of work uh, since I had to give 90% of my studying time to work on the assignments. Yeah. Um, it's designed to, to be like, in this case, 25 hours a week because it's compressed. So, so yeah, some of you will probably think it's quite a lot of work, but uh, it's not impossible. We didn't have any guest lectures in this course. Lectures were good. Uh, laboratory sessions. We, we, we have those Turing passes in, in, in Vecco. I'm only able to, to travel to Vecco one day. Uh, maybe we will like ease down on the lectures. So I will have a recording of a lecture and then I could have spent two hours with uh, tutoring instead. That, that might be an option to, to, to get some more hands-on um, teacher to student contact. Uh, we might do that. Projects were good, tutorials. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, lab sessions. Uh, some of you, uh, some thought that it were hard to get started with Git and GitHub. Uh, yeah, that is, if it's a new experience, it, it's not that hard, but, but it, it takes, put a couple of hours into really learning the basic foundation of Git and GitHub, and, and you will earn a lot of, uh, earn of that in the course. Uh, do, do, do. I, I think there are not much critique more in this. So, so someone that really likes the openness, uh, we do as well. So you are, uh, I mean, if, if, if you like this course and would like to see other courses, we have a lot of courses that you could, um, could check out as well if you like. So that pretty much concludes the course introduction, I think. So uh, what I hope is that you watch this lecture before the first lecture in the course. Uh, you probably have if you hear me say this or you look at it afterwards, but uh, th that is my goal anyway. So we could have a discussion when I come to Vecco the first Wednesday of the course. Uh, until then, I would... Uh, say good luck with starting off in the course and welcome. Uh, if you have any questions regarding um, like submissions and uh, admissions, I should say, how, how if you are ad admitted to the course and uh, f traveling from abroad and stuff like that, please contact uh, the uh, uh, Eva, who is the uh, administrator uh, at the department. I will post her contact information on the course web page below this uh, this uh, recording, uh, so so you have her address there if if if, if you need to to reach someone before the course starts. With that, good luck and welcome to the course. <laughs>